And I grew up, but my only sense, I didn't know what energy was. I just knew that I would feel certain things in my body and I didn't know how to explain it. And so what started happening is um, I started hearing things about from my son and things like uh, I would just hear things will change when I'm 15 and a half or so I kept thinking I was going to find the magic solution. That magic solution was me changing my beliefs, my thoughts, my feelings, my definition of um, school success. And that's what actually changed. <laughs> and then he changed. And, but what changed inside of me was the energy I was holding because we can all, there's so many forms of communication and I would say verbal is just a very small portion, but anyone can walk into a room and kind of feel like, oh, uh oh, something just happened in here. And so we're constantly, our body, our energetic systems are constantly reading energy. And so for a lot of kids that we are calling maybe two year neurodiverse, um, even though I agree with you, that is everyone, there, there can be enhanced sensory systems. Um, a greater capacity for energetic awareness, uh, different processing skills, different ways of attending. Um, I think a lot of those kids think more fractally rather than linearly. They um, resonate more with energe energy rather than thinking. We're moving more from thinking to feeling. And so, I started that's that with my son happened. And then when I would be getting a new student, I would often read their neuropsych or other reports that they'd had. And all of a sudden I started getting kids talking to me and I was like, Oh my gosh, what, what is going on here? I'd had many other experiences in other realms that aren't really um, that don't need to be discussed here around energy and intuition, but I would just say that, you know, I was very empathic growing up. And so I constantly felt energy and, and that communication is often telepathic. And so I started getting a, a new child that was going to come in and they would telepathically speak to me just for, from reading their report, tell my parents that all I need to them to know is X, Y, and Z. And the first time it happened, I was like, I'm not, I'm not telling your parents anything. <laughs> I'm not saying that is not happening in our meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just says like one child after another that started happening. Tell my parents X, Y, and Z tell, this is what's going on. This is what I really need help with. And it, sometimes it was about learning. Sometimes it had nothing to do with learning. It was more about the energy that was being held around that child or for that child. Um, for some, it may be, you know, there's, there's a lot of shame for some. It could be, um, I, I need to like be in a place where I can create and bounce off from one thing to another thing, to another thing. And then in fifth grade, it's going to be different. Um, it was, it was different for every child. And and that's what I love too, is every child had their unique needs and they were able to share it. And then they'd share one thing and I'd work with the child and sometimes I'd work with parents and I'd be like, where, why I need, I need some more help. <laughs> like, what, what do I do now? Because I had to start working in a completely new way. And I had to make sure that I was, you know, if I wanted a child to feel safe, I had to make sure that I was creating a safe space. If I wanted a child, you know, if a parent came in and said, well, I just want her to feel happy. Can you help her get an A on this test? That will make her happy. And I know that, I know that thinking, I, I completely relate to that because so much of what happens in school is so much of a child's life that, that affects everything for that child in so many different ways. And so I had to start saying to parents, I think that short-term solution is not the long-term solution that that's going to lead to happiness. And um, so that that's kind of how it started since that time. Now I do a lot of um, when clients come to me, I often tune in intuitively. I connect to that child energetically because as you said, you know, 
we can read neuroscience or quantum physics. You can have it be around consciousness, spirituality. There's all different paths that lead to this. And we can say we only use 10% of the brain. Now we're able to utilize more. But what I do know is that a lot of kids are able to speak telepathically. A lot of the kids that I've had um, with dyslexia, what's what we call dyslexia, um, there's something I do called light language, which is uh, channeled language that speaks directly to the heart. And I've been able to speak light language and have kids that with dyslexia that have been in every like special school just write light language in one second. And so I know there's so much more that um, I wasn't attuned to, that I didn't know, um, so many capabilities that I feel are really helping us move more towards uh, a deeper connection to self and a deeper knowing, um, more of a heart-based world. And I really feel like a lot of these brave kids are helping us, helping us do that.